In this video, we'll look at a change that accompanies all chemical reactions, a change in energy, and how we can calculate it and use it in calculations. Remember about exothermic and endothermic reactions? We looked at them a few videos ago. We said that the amount of energy released or absorbed during a chemical reaction was called the change in enthalpy. The change in enthalpy is the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. So the change in enthalpy can be positive or negative. If it's positive, it means that the products contain more energy than the reactants, and that means that energy must have been absorbed from the surroundings during the reaction. This will cause the surroundings to cool down. We call this kind of reaction endothermic. If the change in enthalpy is negative, it means that the reactants must have contained more energy than the products, and that means that energy must have been released into the surroundings during the reaction, as the reactants are turned into the products. And this will cause the surroundings to heat up. We call this kind of reaction exothermic. Now, the actual value of the change in enthalpy depends on what the reaction is, what is actually reacting. But it also depends on how much of the chemicals react. For instance, if you burn five litres of fuel, you've got a combustion reaction happening, you will get five times as much heat out as if you burnt one litre of fuel. So when we talk about enthalpies, we somehow need to take into account how much of the reactants have been used. So, the way we express the enthalpy for a particular reaction is like this. The change in enthalpy, and the units of that are kilojoules per mole, equals the amount of energy that's been either released or absorbed, measured in kilojoules, divided by the amount of reactant in moles. So, the energy is in kilojoules. You could also express it in joules, but enthalpies of reaction tend to be quite large values, so we use kilojoules. And it can be positive if the energy was absorbed, or it can be negative if it was released. So the equation for enthalpy is enthalpy equals energy over moles. And you can see that in the unit, kilojoules per mole, energy per mole. Now sometimes the concept of enthalpy is a little difficult to grasp, so let me give you an analogy. Say you're a stall holder at a market and you're selling cherries. Obviously the amount of money that someone pays for your cherries depends on how much they want. So usually you'll set a unit price of so many dollars per kilo. Now there's obviously a relationship between the price per unit, the price paid by the customer, and the mass of the fruit that they want. And we can write that relationship as the price per unit, which is in dollars per kilo, equals the price in dollars over the mass of fruit that they buy in kilos. So say a customer hears about your cherries and knows that a friend of theirs bought 1.5 kilos of cherries for $12. They could work out the price per unit using this relationship. We've got the price per unit is the price over the mass and that was the price was $12 and the mass of cherries that they bought was 1.5 and 12 divided by 1.5 is $8 per kilo. So that's the unit price that you're selling your cherries for. Then there's the case where you as the stall holder can use that relationship to work out how much a customer must pay. Say someone wants 2.4 kilos of cherries. So you have to work out the price. So you rearrange that relationship and the price that they need to pay equals the unit price times the mass of fruit that they're going to buy. So the unit price is $8 per kilo times by 2.4 kilos, which equals $19.20. So that would be the price that they paid. So that's the second case where you'd use this relationship. The last case where you'd use this relationship is if a customer comes up and says, I've got $6, what mass of cherries can I buy? Or, you know, give me $6 worth of cherries. So you have to work out the mass of fruit that they need. So you rearrange the relationship and you'll get that the mass of fruit equals the price that they're going to pay over the unit price. So that equals they've got $6 over the unit price of $8 per kilo. 6 divided by 8 is 0.75 kilos. So they get that many cherries. Okay, so as long as you know two of these three things, the price per unit, uh, the price of the fruit, or the mass of the fruit, you can work out the third missing thing. So, back to enthalpy. A directly analogous relationship applies to enthalpy. The enthalpy of a reaction is just like a price per unit. It tells you how much energy is released or absorbed per mole of reactant. 
and in fact we can express it as per mole of product but we'll get to that at a later stage. So the relationship looks like this. The enthalpy in kilojoules per mole equals the energy that's released or absorbed in kilojoules divided by the amount of reactant in moles. So let's take ethanol for instance. Ethanol is the alcohol that's in wine and spirits but in its pure form it makes a great fuel. So say you wanted to work out the enthalpy of ethanol burning in oxygen and you set up an experiment where you burn 0.780 moles of ethanol and you measure that that releases 1070 kilojoules. Well you can now work out the enthalpy of reaction by dividing the energy by the moles of reactant. That's 1070 kilojoules divided by 0 0.780 moles and that gives you 1370 once you've rounded off your significant figures. Now when you burnt that ethanol you noticed that the heat was released so the surroundings became hotter. So that value of the enthalpy 1370 kilojoules per mole has to be made negative minus 1370 kilojoules per mole. So what this means is when one mole of ethanol burns in sufficient oxygen it releases 1370 kilojoules to the surroundings. So here's another case. Now you know the enthalpy of combustion for ethanol and you set up another experiment where you know that you've just burnt 2.40 moles of ethanol. You can rearrange that equation and use it to calculate the amount of energy that should be released when you burn that much ethanol. So we rearrange it and we get that the energy equals the enthalpy times the moles of reactant which equals minus 1370 kilojoules per mole times 2.40 moles which equals minus 3290 kilojoules. That means 3290 kilojoules of energy should be released when 2.40 moles of ethanol are burnt. Okay, the third possibility is, say you know the enthalpy, as we do, and we could measure the energy that was released during a reaction, then that would allow us to calculate how much ethanol had been burnt. For instance, you run the experiment, say you measure that 15.3 kilojoules of energy has been released, then we can rearrange the equation so that the uh, amount of reactant is the subject, and we get the moles of reactant equals the energy released over the enthalpy of the reaction. And that equals minus 15.3 kilojoules, minus because it's been released, divided by minus 1370 kilojoules per mole, and that equals 0 0.0112 moles of ethanol must have been burnt. So as with the unit price of cherries, as long as you have two of the three quantities in this relationship, you can work out the last one. We can now take this further by combining this enthalpy relationship with what we know about stoichiometry. So where you know the mass of a reactant or the mass of a product uh, or, and the chemical equation that governs the reaction, you can do all sorts of calculations that relate the amount of reactants and products that are used or produced and the energy that is absorbed or released. And in the next video we'll look at a couple of calculations of that sort.